pouring down on your rooftop, what feeling does it give you? Does it make you sleepy? Maybe you find it almost more quiet than actual silence. Maybe you see it as a time to reflect. Whether good or bad, everybody I know takes some kind of slow solace to the sound of rainfall. As the kind of person who sees it as the time to easily reflect, it's something I find myself doing a lot. And one of the series that encourages this the most is Silent Hill, a franchise over the last few years I've become intimately familiar with. I've played the good ones, and here on this very channel, we've been slowly progressing ourselves through the not-so-good ones. And I'm proud of how far we've made it but we're nearly at the end here at the last proper Silent Hill game. I was worried with how I was going to get this one, but I happened upon it in an unlabeled case at a local shop. Four dollars is hard to agree with, although yet again it's PS3 when I vastly prefer 360. And with no PC port to fall back on this time, you might ask, how am I even going to play this one? I did not think this through. Well, recently I picked up this PS2 to HDMI adapter. In between shots, I actually managed to break the adapter and hey, don't look. I mean, at least it survived the Xbox 360 falling on it. You! And as you may know, PS3 has the same port. Lo and behold, copy protectionless HD output through component conversion. I guess it's almost fitting that the console the series started out on is where I'd be stuck whether I like it or not. But enough preamble, let's see what Vetra Games did to try and keep the series afloat one last time. Separate puzzle and difficulty options are quite a welcome surprise to slay into the series. Quick aside, there's this option for highlighted items that I'm not sure I ever turned on. Please do. The flashlight and radio are optional pickups in this game that appear several times, and those are the least of your item missing worries. Enter Murphy, a convict looking for revenge. We don't know why yet, but with help from the corrupt prison staff, is set up with a chance to murder this unsightly fellow. But before we can learn too much about that, we cut to Murphy getting exchanged to a different prison, countering this lady who for reasons beyond us seems to have a strong hatred for Murphy in specific. The bus ride is all but smooth though, crashing downhill towards the water, leaving you as the only one left. You've entered Silent Hill. Or so we think. D to the alone thing, not the Silent Hill thing. I thought it I thought it flowed better. Soon we meet the cop lady from before, still absolutely fuming at our existence, Miss Anne Marie Cunningham. Although, maybe a little bit more justified. She does this little maneuver, which is obviously the least safe thing I've ever seen a person do, and as you'd expect, she falls down. <laughs> Here we get our first choice. Yes, that's right. This Silent Hill also has morality choices, which only affect the ending and not one thing about the story mid-game. Whether you want her to fall or not, she has to fall. This will happen with every choice in the game beginning to end. Uh, morality choices like this are just so lame. It's a stupid excuse to pin an advertising point on the game just because, oh look guys, if you press circle, the, the ending changes. It's so lame and means absolutely nothing. With Cop Lady now very dead and will certainly not just come back, I guess the only option is to keep moving through the wooded outskirts of this haunted town. Getting our first taste of this game's general loop when suddenly Murphy becomes a car guy just in time for normal guy doing his normal job delivering normal mail in Normal Hill to give us some advice. Soon enough, we're committing arson in order to enter this game's other world. Very nice transition in this one. One of my favorites, to be sure. I really want to talk about this in the moment here, but I really think I should save it for a little bit, just kind of really just get it all out at once. We see some of these ceiling crawling enemies, they're kind of freaky moving around and they're kind of Oh, wow, they're quick. I'm, 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 I'm getting my ass kicked. How, how do I- After some very annoying puzzles with hardly any light, we get a roller coaster of a lifetime and finally reach the town proper. Silent Hill. This game handles the town in a very interesting way. It's very open, not quite like that, more in the sense that the entire town is more or less free to explore. There's not much in the way of dungeons, but lots and lots of side quests. This is Majora's Hill! There's tons of side quests sprinkled around the town, which I think is a really good way of implementing the town itself. While I enjoyed the town segments in previous games a lot, it always felt like the town was just the in-between each dungeon, something to just run through quick to get on your way. In this game, you're getting lost in this town whether you like it or not. However, you can miss this, and I recommend you don't. There's an old man in one of the underground areas that when you bring him things he wants, he will fill out the map of the underground tunnels for you, which will act as your fast travel system, because those enemies in the overworld start getting annoying really quick. 
Personally, I hardly did any of the side content, and honestly, it's because I didn't want to. And the game is totally fine with that. You can just skip out on this and find your way through if that's your priority. That's if you can even find your way. Getting to the next dungeon can be the hardest puzzle in the game. You'll easily become frustrated if you don't want to mess around the town a whole bunch. It all really starts to just look the same at some point. I imagine this becomes mitigated if you're really invested in the game though, doing everything you can, taking in all your surroundings. I, however, did not. I used to walk through occasionally, I just couldn't be bothered to find the ladder I needed to go forward sometimes, especially with how often enemies will pop up to annoy you. Speaking of the combat in this game, it combines many things from the last few entries we've covered. It has the weapon variety of origins, but you can only carry one at a time, meaning you can't just stock up on hundreds of weapons to not even use. And even has the environmental use like in Homecoming, but since you only hold on to one at a time, sometimes there are secret areas that you can only get into if you hold on to the right type of weapon. Like this ladder hook you can use to enter apartment 302 from Silent Hill 4. There it is! It's the room! But back to the topic, most importantly these enemies are much more mobile than you are. They kick your ass hard, and you need to be careful and you really don't want to get close, but the only way to deal with them is for you to get close. That's amazing. This is good combat. This is good combat in a survival horror game, and the only thing holding it back is the designs are not scary. I had so much praise, but I can't be scared with these guys jumping around with the most generic designs imaginable. Just like a dark, fucked up version of my hamburger helper mascot. Just a glimpse into my This is my Joker. Star, my twist in my favorite way of most glasses with spare hands when this guy gets angry. Everything is a glory hole if you're horny enough. St <laughs> There's a cat. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> the button mapping too. There's this quick heal button that I was constantly pressing by accident. I honestly would have preferred to have to open a menu to heal over wasting my heals because I fumbled a button press. The only enemy of really any interest here is the invisible ones that can only be killed if you find and destroy a mannequin linked to it. And that is an interesting enemy. There's one more thing it takes from a previous game. I haven't covered it, but Silent Hill Shattered Memories. During the transition to the other world, there's usually a segment where you simply have to run away from a big light. Now I think they were trying a scarier if you can't see it, but I can see it. It's right there. I'm, I'm not scared of that. that. That isn't how this works. That's not to say the entire game is spookless. Uh, there's this one moment where a tire gets replaced with a hanging body and vice versa as you turn the camera away from it. No noises, it just happens, and you don't expect it, and it messes with you. Another character I won't mention yet does this kind of thing too. Speaking of characters, they are all over this game. Beyond the creepy mailman, there are individuals dealing with their own grief, trying to understand a situation that cannot be understood. It does strange shit to reality, man. It's like, there's rules you gotta, gotta follow, you know what I mean? Big problem is a lot of the plot is in reading material. Like, throughout the game, the cutscenes don't really tell you much about what's happened before now, but it's all spelled out mostly in newspapers and documents you pick up. It's not hard to find them or anything, but all this reading can get rather tiresome, and while I got the gist of it all, it wasn't easy to really take it all in, and it caused my friend with me to, at the time to not really get the plot at all and be really confused at the end. It takes a lot of the good from the last four games and comes very far towards being a good future for the Silent Hill franchise. They can keep building from this. Oh, it's the last one that ever- After Downpour, the Silent Hill series went dormant, and not even Hideo Kojima could get Konami to try again before he dipped entirely. If this review so far has convinced you to play the game, you'll have a hard time. It's delisted from the Xbox Store and was never listed digitally for the PS3, so you're likely to have to pay well over $30 minimum to get a copy for either console. But the Xbox 360 version of the game is compatible with Xbox One and series consoles, if you only have one of those. Otherwise, piracy is the only preservation that's really available. I can't condone it, but I can't control it. Just watch out, the game was clearly made by people unfamiliar with the engine they worked in, so the frame rate can get a little iffy and occasionally be a little buggy. But the game, at least on PS3, has gotten lots of patches to fix up the game dramatically, if the original complaints are anything to go by. From here on, it's gonna get spoiler heavy, so you can stop watching here if you're interested. Otherwise, here's the rest. Back to the beginning. Murphy, killing this guy in prison. How did we get here? 
Well, before now, Murphy was having a rough time. His son got kidnapped and was found dead in a lake soon after. His wife blamed him for their son's death and left. Murphy's a man with nothing left to lose. So he steals a police cruiser so he can get arrested. Well, this man is named Patrick Naper. He's a discord at child predator, the very same one that killed Murphy's son. Murphy stole the police cruiser so he can get to the same prison as the man who killed his son in order to return the favor. Of course he couldn't just get at him like that, so he makes a deal with a corrupt corrections officer, George Sewell. George sets up a situation where Murphy can kill Patrick on one condition, quote, also kill somebody who deserves it. This person ends up being Frank Coleridge. Frank is another officer who knows Murphy is a good man and has no clue why he's in jail. Murphy isn't able to kill Coleridge, so George does it himself and frames Murphy as the man who killed Frank. But it didn't actually kill him, rather it left him in a vegetative state for the rest of his life. This heavily affected his family. Family like his daughter. Anne Cunningham, the officer you encounter on the bus ride and throughout the game. She thinks Murphy killed her father and hates him more than anything for it. Throughout the game, there's this disgusting looking character that hides in the background, ever haunting you. They're also the final boss in the end. This character represents Murphy's overwhelming guilt over what happened to Frank, also overlooking him everywhere he goes. One last character is the Boogeyman. At first, this sounds like the dumbest thing. Another pyramid head ripoff, but this time it's the oh no, the little kid's story, but actually real and dangerous. But actually, it works in complete opposition of that on a story level. The Boogeyman is never dangerous. He represents things that people find scary, but actually aren't. Fears that come from misunderstandings and, and smaller fears. For everybody in Silent Hill, the Boogeyman is something different. For Anne, the Boogeyman is you. Here you have three choices. Sit for a long while and let yourself die, kill Anne, or spare her, and the game ends. The game has lots of endings, just like any Silent Hill game, minus a UFO ending here. One of only two games in the series not to have one, the other being four. I got an ending where we get a role reversal between Murphy and Anne in jail, and then again I got one where Anne learns the truth and goes on to kill Sewell. Other endings I didn't get include an even better one where all is forgiven and they just decide to live on. A much worse ending where Murphy gets the death sentence. Yeah, I'll see you in hell, cupcake. The absolute worse ending where Murphy fails to learn anything and is tormented for the rest of his life. In my absolute favorite, an ending where the whole Silent Hill cast throws Murphy a massive surprise party. Pyramid Head even comes in to slice the cake. The Silent Hill 2 and 3 characters seem to have a bit of a neck thing going on. I hope they get better. Silent Hill Downpour isn't as loud or as influential as the other games in the franchise, but quite like the rain it's named after, it's that quiet that makes its good moments have all that much more impact. This line was actually suggested by someone in my test audience. I couldn't just steal it without letting you know they wrote the best line in the script. It's this surprisingly honest attempt at modernizing Silent Hill while still trying to hold on to what makes it Silent Hill. I can't say it's for everyone, but if there's a modern Silent Hill to play, I think this might be the one. I just wish it was more available. Sad it just ended there. Where do I go from here?